Hey there cats, good time of the day to you, thank you for tuning into my channel. Decided to take several speed races in Need for Speed Pro Street these days around. It is actually an urge that appeared about two years ago when I saw uh, Mr. Jaws run on Pontiac GTO 65, year 65, on Ebisu and Boy, his driving was awesome, and since then, for two years, and that's an example of how long the ideas fester in my head before I actually come to, you know, realize them, transfer them into the real life, so to say. And so yeah, two years, two years I've been waiting for this, and finally I've decided the time has come. Installed Pro Street, installed a couple fixes along the way which I've never installed before, therefore I'm not sure if I'm playing a completely, uh, you know, stuck game. There are several scripts and I believe in default games the speed of the cars was limited to like 402 uh, kilometers per hour or so, but my Pontiac is now able to go up to 430. Uh, this might be, you know, considered a slight modding or something. So yeah, just think, this is maybe not a stock game, not quite the stock game I'm playing here, but yeah, whatever. I'm still far from Mr. Joe's times. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I've never asked him, but I'm pretty sure that Mr. Joe actually uses a racing wheel and uh, I'm using here uh, my trusty Logitech Rumble Pot 2, so that's the best I can do with it. This first race is an autobahn ring and uh, this here is pretty much how I've left my Pontiac GTO back in the days. Uh, though I've applied some of Mr. Joe's uh, recommend, some of a, a bit, a part of Mr. Joe's tuning, which I've asked him about under his uh, Ebisu video. Uh, but overall, this is my Pontiac, um, not customized anyhow, not you know, not perfected for the track anyhow. But Autobahn Ring is a very easy track, so it works quite fine. As you see, even with an optimal customization, GTO simply dusts the competition. But honestly, Autobahn Ring is just that easy, pretty much. Yeah, there's, there's no trouble dusting down the competition on this track. For the comparison, I will now show you the run with my Challenger. Uh, this is a mean machine, 100 over 1 sorry, over 1000 horsepower in it, uh, but despite the maddening power, it is not as fast as Pontiac GTO. And I also have to mention that there are like two types of fine tuning in Need for Speed Pro Street. Pardon me. So, as I've said, there are two types of tuning in Need for Speed Pro Street. Uh, first type of tuning involves uh, you know, legit tuning, you just uh, install class 4 suspension, etc, etc and fine-tune your car accordingly and the second is uh, somewhat of a cheat, but it involves actually first installing the stage 3 or 4 suspension, then tuning your car as if normally as if you do normally, but then you swap back to the stage 1 or stock suspension this um, uh, the result is quite uh, interesting. It looks like suspension becomes like extra stiffy. The cars get a lot of maneuverability, but at the same time they become really jumpy and uh, even the small bump can send your car flying. So, Mr. Joe and the likes of him, you know, like the professional guys who drive really fast, not the casual guys like me, uh, they tune the same car over and over for the specific track. I do not do this, I do not want to go through the troubles of doing all that stuff with my Pontiac GTO, and that's why I run the Challenger. Look here, you have to slow down before this bump, because otherwise it will send you flying. Yes, my Challenger is an example of uh, cheaty tuning. It runs the stock suspension, stock Dodge Challenger suspension, with a fine tuning on it. And uh, this is uh, the cars, uh, the Pontiac GTO and Challenger, they ultimately, you know, with this cheaty tuning, they behave rather similarly. So Challenger is like an example of what you will get if you will do that trick on the GTO. 
Uh, basically, you will get the same speed, but uh, you will get a much uh, more precise turning power. Uh, a lot... Um, and you will have to learn every bump on the track. You will have to actually brake before them, before the dangerous ones. You will have to learn where they are, how to avoid them, which trajectory you should take. Because otherwise, you will be totally. Still, after one ring is kind of easy track. Here's my time, and it is actually not that worse than the Pontiac GTO time. I don't know, this car is GTO is considered bad because Nate Denver drives it slow, but overall, as you could see, it is much faster than my Challenger. I mean, yes, yes, I've had to slow down with the Challenger once, but still, overall, the Challenger is slow, slower and GTO is over the top. Uh, Mr. Jaws after one ring time is 20581 and my was about 215 if you remember the first race. So that's still 10 seconds behind Mr. Jaw, even though I did my best. <laughs> I really did my best. Well, perhaps if I'd fine tune my car, I could uh, like close up to him, but as far as I understand, either Mr. Jaw's tuning is different or. His game is stuck, because his Pontiac GTO cannot go over that limit of 402 km per hour. And uh, my kinda can. Like on this episode track, I've already started fine-tuning car for my for myself. And this time I've actually spent a minute or two, because I wanted to go fast this time, you know. Uh, back in the days I've just drove my GTO and fell okay, but since I've saw that uh, felt okay yeah but since I've saw that Mr. Joe video I've saw that I I got to see how good I can be with Pontiac GTO so now I fine tuned it for Ebisu and um, it can go about 430 as I've said yeah here it goes 436 it was uh, it kind of feels a bit unfair or so so yeah I guess 10 seconds on afterburn ring behind Mr. Joe is about what I should get. That's that's my time. Here on Ebiso I will be even slower. Then afterburn ring time is the closest time I could ever get to Mr. Joe. He is just that good of a driver. And once again, I'm pretty sure he has a racing wheel and I only have a gamepad. I cannot be consistent, you know. I cannot have quite the same consistency. Some people say to me that Game parts are pretty much the same as the racing wheel. Uh, well, I don't know. Never worked for me. I mean, I drive an actual car, and if racing wheel, I've never tried one. If racing wheel is anyhow near that experience of an actual car, it is way above what joystick a game part can um, offer. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it joystick. It's an old, my old, you know, habit from the 90s. Game part, of course. So yeah, analog sticks. They're nowhere near their actual wheel. And yeah, no comparison, at least not for me. I was never able to get that precise with analog sticks as I could with racing wheel, uh, with automobile. Yeah, so I think having racing wheel is a huge advantage. If it is not that much of an advantage for you, you probably should just give your racing wheel to someone else. I don't know. I would love to have a racing wheel, so I'm looking at it for like years and I never have money to buy one. So once again, here's an example of a um, small part of Ebisubi's Challenger, which has a stock suspension. It will be much slower now, because this part of Ebisu has a lot of bumps, and since we run that cheaty suspension setup, we will have to slow down before them. On the plus side of it, AI drivers look like they use the same cheaty suspension setup, because um, if you will look at the minimap, a lot of them will have problems on the bumps, a lot of them will uh, spin out, sometimes they even crush their cars here. So if I took Pontiac GTO for the race, I would leave them so far behind, man. Yeah, Pontiac GTO with uh, this setup, which I ran, completely dominates Ebisu. So, my time on Ebisu was 3 minutes in this run, my fastest time ever was 2.50.38, unfortunately I haven't recorded that run. Uh, so that was 10 seconds um, 
faster. Even though I, it, that run was messier, I'm saying, I'm telling you, I cannot be consistent. Uh, on that 250 run, which I haven't recorded, I've hit couple, you know, how do they call that? Th that part where the road works are. I've hit couple. Well, you understand me. Couple of those things on the road. The cones, not the cones. The other ones, the heavier ones. The signs, or so to say, not the signs. They, they are in the middle of the road. Something like, whatever. I guess you understand me. Either way, it was a messy run. I've damaged my car a bit, and I still got a higher time. 250.38. Crazy, right? But that's just because I was very lucky on some curves, in some turns, and I cannot, cannot really repeat that. Cannot really repeat that luck. It is luck because I'm running with an analog stick. It is not skill. I cannot repeat that with an analog skill. I can, with, with an analog stick, I cannot teach myself how to take lean into the turns properly with analog sticks. Still, if you think 250.38 is fast, well, Mr. Joe's episode time is 2.36.25. That's 14 seconds faster, and that's crazy, man. But yeah, he doesn't even slow down in that uh, part with Rodworks, and I cannot get into it without slowing down. I mean, there's only one lane left. It's darn hard not to hit anything in there, and Mr. Joe just blows through it like hot knife through butter. Crazy skills, man, crazy skills. Meanwhile, we're in Nevada. I believe I haven't changed anything in the car from Ebisu for this track. So this is pretty much the same DTO I've had on Ebisu. Pardon me again. I will probably montage those parts out, so you won't hear it, but still, pardon me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, what can I say? Mr. Joe is, uh, since he is kind of pro, yeah, you know, like dead serious on one of the best times or something. I, I I don't know. I know how to call. He's just better than me. All right. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Mr. Joe, since he's better than me, uh, he actually uh, spends time to tune his GTO for this track, and he installs stage one suspension for it, and I believe no brakes along the way. And uh, therefore, he's able to complete this track much faster. I'll bet he ran the full track. In fact, in this uh, last portion of this track, the stage 4 GTO might even be faster than the one with the cheaty suspension, stage 4 suspension GTO. Here's an example of how this same part of the track will look with the cheaty suspension. And my challenger, here it comes. We will have to drop some speed here and there, like this, because otherwise we are out of the game for good. Uh, surprisingly, though, with this cheaty suspension setup, some jumps will get even easier. Physics really go wild in Infra Speed Per Street when you do this suspension cheat. I don't know, I mean, I've never quite, you know, paid close attention to that. I've just. When I play the game, I usually just play the game. I do not go hard onto setups and stuff. I I'm a casual player. I go hard on modding, I dive into the code for days, etc, etc, textures, cheats, cheat engine, all that stuff, trying to get into Ghidra and uh, some other program, but in the game itself I'm having fun, so yeah. This video here is, uh, I'm actually trying hard. This is about the best the casual player can do. So. Challenger with the cheaty suspension goes quite slower than the GTO. Well, probably because Challenger is just slower, but overall, here's my time with the Challenger, and you saw all those places where you have to slow down in order just not to, you know, be total it. But other than that, it kind of works. It kind of works. Both cars can be quite dominative on the track, mostly because AI doesn't run GTOs and stuff properly. Nate Denver is a perfect example of that. And partly because speed races, they rely heavily on the, on the draft effect. If you manage to catch the, into the draft corridor of your opponent, you will get to crazy speeds. It's like free nitros. 
Therefore, my bet if my challenger and GTO would meet each other on the track with um, careful usage of nitros and drafting each other, it could be a pretty close run. A car with um, cheaty suspension and a car with a stage 4 suspension, legit suspension. Yeah, they, they have pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much the equal chances to win, so to say. As you probably know, I've mentioned it a couple times in my videos. Oh well, alright, you probably don't, whatever. So, I usually do not like time attacks, but in this video I'm doing them because the speed, speed races in Need for Speed Pro Street are just amazing, and it is kind of cool to run them without any damage, you know, like 400 km per hour in a perfect car is just awesome. And at the same time, to complete races without damage is next to impossible. As I've said, speed races heavily rely on draft technique. As you could see in my autobahn race with Challenger, AI was always on my tail, because I couldn't, you know, like build a gap before me and the AI racer uh, because uh, because of the draft so even if you drive perfectly there are huge chances that AI will actually kiss your rear bumper once or twice and it is kind of unavoidable really to complete a speed race without damage in for speed pro street is one hell of a task one hell of a task so here I am pretty much in the middle of the big Nevada race, of the full Nevada course, and well, what can I say? Mr. Joe for this video, he used uh, the Chitty suspension, the stage 1 suspension, and I'm running a legitimate suspension here. Uh, overall, well, it kind of works, in fact, I think maybe with uh, if you spend enough time fine-tuning your vehicle, Perhaps it is actually even possible to beat the cheaty suspension timing with the legitimate suspension. Uh, not sure about that, not sure about that. I mean, me here, I'm definitely not breaking any records, I'm just having my fun. <laughs> and I hope you will have some fun too, watching this stuff. Uh, but overall, I'm just running for my own, you know, for my own pleasure. So I, as I've mentioned it, I believe I've already mentioned it and perhaps multiple times, pardon me if I did so, but I'll mention it once again. I'm not quite tuning my cars precisely, I'm just using what they've had. So here it is, and my time is 3.04.82, and if you think this is fast, watch Mr. Joe's run. In fact, I, I will actually attach all links to Mr. Joe's videos into, into the description, I will put them there, so you can see how he runs this stuff. And he runs this stuff... Ooh, crazy! Either way, Mr. Joe's time on full Nevada course is 2.54.72, that's 10 seconds faster than I've did. <laughs> Crazy, man. I'm pretty sure it is possible to go sub 3 minutes with the legitimate suspension GTO, but uh, 2.54? I'm really not sure. That uh... I know I've did some mistakes, and yeah, I'm pretty sure if you fine-tune your car and stuff, you will win those 4 seconds from me from my time, but 2.54 for Mr. Joe's time, that's darn fast, so I really cannot say if it is possible without a TT suspension setup. Oh well. <laughs> As I've said, I'm not making any records here, just having my fun, so here is another short course with Challenger, because I really love this short Nevada course. This is definitely my favorite speed track in the whole game. Boy, this is some gorgeous Nevada aesthetics right here, I just love it. And Pro Street, yeah, they really did it just correct with the speed races. Oh boy, just love, just love watching it. Uh, either way, next up is Dockyards, and that is a very special track. The thing is, it wasn't in the career in the game by default, and in the career by default as well, as far as I remember, it came into the game as part of the booster pack, which added it both into the career and into the race day settings. Here it is, and what can I say? Dockyards. Boy, 
this speed track is something. It really feels more like a grip track. It only has like one straight line. All right, like two straight lines, one long and one short. But overall, it's more like a grip track. And I've had to retune my Pontiac GTO for this track heavily. I've made all the suspension settings uh, steepy, steep to the maximum, plus 10 steepness. Uh, pretty much every single one of them that relates to steepness of the suspension. I've made the uh, caster, I believe I've set it on zero, added toin a bit. Uh, I don't remember anything else. I remember I've cut six gear to the minimum. Yeah, overall it's it's all about stiffness and then add some to the caster and tow and camber until you feel yourself comfortable. And that's how it's done. I've tried to... I admit I've tried actually to uh, take a spin on this track with the cheaty suspension method, uh, but it didn't quite fly. I believe that suspension needs more fine tuning and I didn't want to get into it too much because yeah, it might be it might take a lot of time and I don't remember if I've already said that but I prefer my GTO to be on the legit suspension while I have a car that is on cheaty suspension and that car is Challenger and so I've took a spin in my Challenger and Challenger made it through the track perfectly in fact Tokyo Dockyards is the only track where Challenger is, uh, consequently, much faster than GTO. And I did not even have to change any settings for my Challenger. I just took it as is on this track and it was about 10 seconds faster than GTO. Uh, my best time on GTO is about 2.12, I believe? 2.11, something around that time. Uh, yeah, 212, 212 seems about right. And my best time on the Challenger, which will be the last race of this video, is 202. Well, the major problem is, is that 202 is not that fast at all. Uh, thing is, pretty much any other car will make it through this lap fast. Like, I've took my another muscle car, the modern one, Challenger concept, uh, 2006, I believe, uh, and... Uh, I didn't even try hard and I made it in 152. That's 10 seconds faster than Challenger. So overall Need for Speed Pro Street kinda suffers from being a little bit less arcadey than its predecessors. It is quite realistic and no matter how far you'll fine tune your car, in the end of the day you still drive a 7 miles long barge which is any old American muscle is. Namely GTO, Challenger, they're long, they're heavy, they're powerful and they're hard to steer. Therefore a track like this is a major nuisance for them. Is it possible to win? Yeah, sure. In fact, as you can see, I'm winning right now. I will win uh, some races with Boss Challenger and GTO in this video. And yes, so it is possible to win. It is possible to win against the best cars of the game. Because the race is the race. It is not only about your skill. It is a little bit about the skill of other drivers. And even a little bit of uh, luck in it, you know? And luck is what you need in races like this. I will get back to the theme a bit later. And meanwhile, I want to tell you that Challenger run is coming up. So here's a lap with Challenger and um, as usual, I have to learn every bump <laughs> how to make through it. Uh, in general, the rule for my car is to not go through jumps over 220 km per hour on speed over 220. Still. There are several moments on this track that are up to almost complete random, because there is almost no way to get through them reliably. Still, the Challenger turns out a very maneuverable car. On the, on the downside, though, in order to get a good time with Challenger, you have to be very precise. The handling is very, you know, to the point. GTO is much more easier and pleasant to drive. 
even though you lose 10 seconds after all. Oh yeah, another thing I've almost forgot to mention is that for this track I prefer to turn traction control off. Uh, this helps me to get through the turns at uh, much more aggressive angles and an occasional drift actually helps. I do not lose controls because my cars are tuned perfectly, well at least for me, and therefore I really rock with the way they are controlled. So this is the first jump which is up to complete random, there is no way to get through it reliably no matter how you do it, unless you really drop your speed but then this is not an option in a race. So in the jump you have to like pray. But on the other hand, there are walls around you, so there won't be nothing major. You will most likely damage your car and there's a slight chance of being totaled, but overall, well, my challenger makes through it reliably. I guess there is a way to fine-tune your GTO with the cheaty suspension, so it will be at least on par with the challenger. Top speed doesn't really matter here. Now this last turn is another turn which is up to a complete random, because uh, yeah, there's really no way to say which way this cheaty suspension will swing your car. But overall it was good, quite a good run, 204, not bad, not bad at all. So yeah, it is definitely, I guess, it is definitely possible to go under 2 minutes on this lap on Challenger. And as I've said, I guess there is a way to tune a GTO in a way that it will be on a compatible terms. I'm not doing it. My best time so far, as I've already mentioned, is 2.02. And um, unfortunately, Mr. Joe didn't uh, make a run on this track. I would love to see which time he would come up with. I really would love to see how fast it is possible to make it with uh, GTO or any other muscle car, vintage muscle car. Is it possible to beat a 150? I wonder if it is. So. As I've said, winning a race uh, in a vintage muscle car, pretty much winning any race in dockyards in a Need for Speed for a Street with a vintage muscle car, well, save for drag and a drift, so... Alright, not all of them, but half of them. Winning grip and speed races in dockyards uh, with a vintage muscle car in Need for Speed for a Street requires a little bit of luck to be on your side. Mm. Basically, you need to hope that uh, first your opponents will make uh, a mistake or two, hit the walls or something, and you actually should not do the same thing, because it is, yeah, it is quite a hard track. And the second thing that helps really, really much is the starting lineup. In this race, for example, if you've noticed, the car on the first place was Don Brown's purple GTO. And Don Brown's GTO is not mine GTO. Don Brown's GTO is very slow. As you can he see, he's on the seventh place. Uh, surprisingly, not on the eights. Don Brown usually finishes on the eights. And having him on the first place really helps as he slows down all the other cars that start up behind them, like that for GTO Zonda. If Zonda starts on the first place, it just rockets away. This lineup, for example, is very hard. Mazda RX-7 and Zonda are hard cars, but even harder is that Seb Crawford's BMW which is right in front of me. The plus is that that BMW is right in front of me, so it has to work its way through other drivers and I will have some time to work my way up. Zonda is not even that dangerous to be quite honest. I mean, yeah, it is a speedy car, but it is possible to catch up with it. It makes mistakes quite frequently, it lacks the grip and it has to slow down considerably through the jumps. BMW, on the other hand, is a complete monster. I bet that's the fastest car I've met on this track. It makes through the turns without slowing down. It uh, doesn't... Uh, it is not affected much by the jumps. There is a chance that Seb Crawford will actually total his BMW, but it happens very rarely, so don't know how for that. In a lineup like this, once again, you have to rely on luck. As you see, I'm losing my time behind... Uh, Zonda and BMW. Luck will come my way, and so here is an example of what you got a hope for in this race. How hard it is to wait for something like this to happen? How long you have to wait? Well, actually not much, like, you know, about 10 or 15 retries, and yeah, there you go. Racing against actual human drivers 
Never tried that, might be easier, might be harder, but either way. I guess, in my opinion, GTO and Challenger on this track, well, overall, I guess they are quite compatible if you know how to drive. Um, yeah, I guess they have their fair chance of winning. They're definitely not the best cars, uh, all the other speed tracks with straight lines are obviously much better for these monsters. Well, except perhaps for the Challenger, but Challenger does quite well on Autobahn and in uh, Nevada, Ibisu is way too bumpy. Still, overall, yeah, it works, especially if you would actually change your suspension according to the track, change your settings according to the track. This way every car can maybe be compatible on any track, if you have that time to spend on those customizations. Well, I prefer my car being, you know, tuned to the class of the own and just pick one according to the track I'm racing in. And well, that was it. Hope you enjoyed this video, cats. Thanks for being with me. Good luck.